Ladies and gentlemen, this is an extremely embarrassing story about how I was crushed in a chess game by a person who I thought was a beginner. You see, I recently took a trip. I went from LaGuardia Airport to Jacksonville, then drove an hour and a half to Gainesville at the University of Florida. They hosted me for an event. It looked like this. I spoke to a room of enthusiastic chess fans of all ages. And then they came up one by one and played me in a chess game up on the stage. But nobody told me how strong they were. The point was I was gonna play them and then I was going to guess their playing strength. Now, if you're new to this channel, I have a series called Guess the Elo where I do just that. People send me their chess games, I analyze them and then try to predict what strength they are. It's very funny, you should check it out after you watch this. So a guy came up to me and all I knew is this guy was named Derek. Derek was a very very nice guy. He didn't seem too intimidating. He seemed very nice and humble. And I thought, well, I don't know how good he is. So let's just ease into this game. And that was the last mistake I made. In this video, I'm going to show you the live footage and I'll narrate the game for you. Then we will do a deep dive analysis of how this dude completely took my soul in front of a room of 500 people. All right, let's go. So we shake hands. I open with the king's pawn. And he opens with pawn to e6, which is the French defense. Now, I don't know how good he is. So I play b3. Now, this is a gambit line. He plays d5, and now I give away my center pawn. He doesn't actually accept the gambit, so I advance. I push him backwards. He seems to know the theory, so at this point, you know, I'm thinking maybe 16, 1700, because that's kind of a good baseline. I play all my normal stuff. I bring out my queen, so he can't move his pieces out, specifically his dark squared bishop, knight to f3. And at this point, he plays the first surprising move. He's supposed to develop the pieces on the left side, uh, but he attacks my queen. And you'll notice that game review... Uh, says that's a small inaccuracy. Also, we laughed because I announced to the room that I thought he was rated 300, uh, which was funny, but ultimately came back to seriously bite me. I'm already thinking, and he hasn't spent any time. There's two seconds of bonus time, which is why his time is still at three minutes. I slide back, and now I need to start throwing my pawns in front of my queen forward, like my G pawn. Now, the computer really doesn't like his move because here pawn to G4 is very, very strong, but I was sort of easing into the game, and again, I don't know the strength of the person I'm playing, so I just thought, you know what, let's just develop our pieces. Now, computer hates that move a lot, uh, but I hate the computer. Bishop to b7. Notice I'm down about 30 seconds on the clock already. And I apologize for the slightly bad camera quality. Blame the University of Florida. Um, I've officially crossed more than 30 seconds time deficit, which, again, did not really stress me at the time because, well, I, I didn't know who I was playing against. And here I went to attack Derek's pawn. I move my knight to g5, and you'll notice that the pawn on the left side in the center uh, on e6 is completely undefended, which he defended like that, and now I thought, oh, I'm just easily winning. I mean, at this point, I thought, okay, 1500, you know, amateur, maybe intermediate, because knight b5, boom, you know, my knight's getting in. I'm going to either attack his king or fork his king and rook. So that was an easy game. Thank you for playing, Derek, until I realized, wait a minute, he can take my center pawn. And he thinks for a little bit, and you'll notice that, you know, my eyes go wide there for a second if you rewind. I'm like, wait a minute, is that a thing? And again, we will deep dive into this later. For now, just pay attention to my beautiful voice and exceptional chess commentary, almost like a boxing match. Nobody else can watch seconds tick away on a clock and talk about it quite like Gotham Chess. Uh, now I have evened out the clock situ situation, 209. Shout out to Nate Diaz and uh, Nick Diaz as well, of course. Um... Uh, he, he now goes below two minutes because he's thinking, and, and I'm, I'm in a really good situation. My, my knights are terrorizing him from both sides, and, uh, well, I'm probably going to win material. He takes, and uh, th this is where I realize he's probably about 1,800. 1,800, maybe 2,000. I thought, all right, this is no beginner. <laughs> I don't know why he acted like a beginner. I don't know why he acted like he was, you know, and so I took the knight, which actually is a really bad move, but I did not realize it at the time. He takes my knight, but I thought, well... He took my knight, and I took his knight, but now I'm going to get in, and I'm going to fork his king and his rook. But I actually realized that despite landing this fork that you see, and now taking his rook in the corner, the only reason I'm pausing is because I'm like, wait a minute, my position's actually not that good. I mean, I have a rook, but he has a knight, and he has all eight pawns. So he has a knight and a pawn for a rook. White is up a point of material, but as you can see from the evaluation on the left side, right there next to the chessboard, I'm not really in any better position at all. And I, I don't even like, do I trade the queens? Which way do I castle? Where do I put my light squared bishop? Which pawns do I push? And that's why I start thinking again. I'm now down again 30 seconds. And I'm starting to wonder, 
Am I playing like a master? Is this like a 2200 rated player? These are all the thoughts going through my head. I'm like, I can't lose game one. There's 500 people watching. I mean, hundreds of thousands of people watch me, you know, my videos when I'm sitting here, but that's not the same thing as an auditorium. And he's just playing instantly. Look at Derek. Derek's not even thinking. He's just bringing all his pieces out. This was so annoying, by the way, that he was playing really fast. I'm now down to a minute and three seconds or two seconds or one second. And again, I'm not gonna lose on time because every time we make moves, we get two seconds of bonus time. So I castled queenside and I decided, look, I gotta stop overthinking the position. I mean, at this rate, he's just gonna crush me, you know? And so I'm, I'm like, all right, well, do your worst. And uh, there was a bit of a camera lag there, but he, he, he moved his bishop off the back rank. You can see it at the top left of your screen. I slid my king out of the way of his queen. The camera did some goofy stuff there. University of Florida Wi-Fi. And that, that move is preparing a pawn storm. So you are about to notice that Derek is just going to start pushing all of his pawns toward my king, which makes a lot of sense because that is, you know, the way you attack in chess. Uh, and uh, I, I, I was not happy about this. I, I was not happy about these developments whatsoever. Uh, camera quality seems to have been mildly restored at this point, and the time difference is now shortening. He now advances a pawn on that side as well to take space away from me. And you'll notice that white just can't move. My bishops or my rook can't really do anything. Uh, and here I decided to go for a rook lift. I brought my rook up to try to attack his queen. I went really low on the clock here, uh, below 40 seconds. I've now got 37 on the clock, 35, uh, and I just don't know what to do. Not only do I not know what to do, I have no idea the skill of the person that I'm playing. And uh, they say that in a fight, uh, it's, it's not, you know, it, it's not that you're losing the fight when you get scared. It's that you are in a much harder fight than you expected. And this is exactly what is happening at this point. He's just playing every move quickly, confidently. The evaluation of the position's not changing, and I'm officially down below 20 seconds on the clock. So I have to start moving instantly, right? I have saved all of this. I'm now at 19 seconds, and if I play slowly, I'm gonna lose. So now I'm like, okay, let's think like a judoist, like a judoka. And uh, he's gonna, let's use his forward momentum against him. I know that his next move is probably gonna be pawn to c4. So he's going to attack me on the queen side. And he thinks about it, he goes below a minute as well. And he's going to play it here in a moment. Now, again, I need to make every move in literally one or two seconds or else I'll lose. C4, big blunder apparently, D3. Now I'm like, okay, you wanna open the position, Derek? No problem. You wanna open these fists on your face, Derek? No, you're much bigger than me, let's not do that. C takes B3 and I thought I'm opening up the C file for my rook. You'll notice that I played C takes B3 and now I'm gonna get my queen out of danger with 14 seconds on the clock. And I, I opened up the C file for my rook because I figured we could go in and attack. Queen g7, he targets my pawn, and I defend it. Apparently a huge blunder. I had a winning tactic there, I'll show you later, don't worry about it. Derek is at 40 seconds now, and I have 13. And I'm faking confidence here. You'll notice that, you know, I look stoic, and I look like I'm not nervous at all, and by the way, neither does he, which was super, super annoying. Uh, he keeps advancing, and I think, well, there's nothing there. Let's take the file, let's make every move instantly. 12 seconds versus 28. And Derek's like, do I take the pawn? Do I push the pawn? And he, he pushes again. He just keeps taking space. He's locking the position down. I slide my king all the way to the corner because I don't know what to do and my move looks really confident. He attacks my rook. 10 seconds versus 23. I'm now below 10 seconds. I gotta start moving faster, but I don't wanna seem nervous. Now, knight b4 attacks my rook. The camera quality is about to die. We start shuffling. I bring my rook up into his position. He attacks my rook. And be prepared for about two minutes of shuffling now. Rook c3. Position is very locked. You know that because he has seven pawns and I have six. He offers me a rook trade, which I thought was good for me, but he thought it was good for him, which is why he did it. Seven seconds versus 17. Now I don't, I hesitate. I play queen f1. I have no idea what to do, except I need to sacrifice to get in. He plays queen f8. I Slide my bishop back because, I don't know, reasons. Don't judge me, I have eight seconds on the clock. You try playing chess. H3, he takes away more space. I slide my queen powerfully forward, he slides his. And in this position, I blunder. He can skewer my queen to my rook and I noticed that immediately. And I think he noticed it, but he just kept shuffling. Now we both shuffle. Less than 10 seconds on the clock, I'm still looking to break in somehow. And I mean, I'm totally confident I'm gonna win the game. And I'm like, where is my... Where is my side? And he, he attacks my queen. There's not much I can do. So I go all the way back. He goes all the way back. I attack his weakness. He defends, which is a big mistake, but I didn't notice because I had no time. So I just keep shuffling. I miss another opportunity to potentially break through. He's just defending himself. And look at me. I'm shaking my head. 
I'm shaking my head because I just can't break into his position. I have five seconds on the clock. So I start shuffling. I'm like, do I trade the queens? Do I not trade the queens? Let's not trade the queens. And I slide my queen to h5. He repeats moves with me. And I'm, I'm like, how do I? I and, I? and at this point, I look at him and I say, leave me alone. He just keeps shuffling his pieces as well. I got five seconds to figure something out, so but I can't. There's nothing for me to do. I'm trying to sacrifice. I'm trying to get my queen into his position. Bishop takes pawn as a big threat. He defends himself. I give him a check. He slides his king. And I just can't break in. We have four seconds on the clock. I play a move with three seconds. He just goes back. I'm like, oh my goodness. This is unbelievable. My queen's in the corner. But now he offers me a queen trade, and I should have taken because I slide out of the way. I give him a check. How am I going to break in? I give him a check, and <gasps> disaster. Oh my goodness. At this point, I realize he has trapped my queen. He trapped my queen. And I, and, and I lost. And I have to resign. I, I actually resigned. There was a small camera lag there. But I resigned the game. An absolutely unbelievable turn of events. And we just talk about the game for a little bit. And that's the end. That is how I lost to the anonymous player who I thought was a beginner. Well, here we are. Uh, never thought I would have to make a video about my time in Florida. Uh, I mean, I might make more games and more videos because, uh, those games were actually quite interesting. <laughs> but <laughs> that was a completely insane story. That was a completely insane game. I had met Derek, uh, and some of the senior club officers at the University of Florida the night before, and we had, like, chicken sandwiches together, and we never talked about chess skill, ever. So I just thought it was, you know, I thought it was a group of people that learned chess a couple of years ago. Like many of you have learned chess probably or gotten back into it a couple of years. thought he was like a, th a thousand, you know. We never spoke about chess, so I just thought, oh, Derek, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's an alumni, you know, he's a, he, look at him, he's so brave playing first. <laughs> it's not that I underestimated him, it's just that the average chess player is rated like 1100, you know? I've had people run into me on the street or in restaurants or anywhere in New York, they're always like, I'm 1100, I'm 1200, I'm 1400, I'm 800, but the average level is... Anyway, um, that's not, you know, uh, I wish I had known going in. So, you know, I started with E4, uh, and I, let me turn on the eval. And again, I'm not going to bore you because you, you obviously have many things you can click on in your sidebar. But, uh, you know, I played b3, which is one of the ways to play against the French defense, which is an opening that black plays against the king's pawn, like this. Traditionally, against the French, you put two pawns in the center. This is like good beginner principles. And now you can either push, you can take, which is more symmetrical and boring. You can defend your center pawn like this. Uh, all of those things are real. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to play a little gambit. And he didn't accept. And the idea of the gambit is um, that white does this, and then goes here and castles queenside and throws a bunch of pawns at black if black castles short. It's called the Papa Ticulad Gambit. Don't know why it's called that. Knight f6. Now, again, at this point, I thought, okay, he's got good opening principles, which means he's obviously an intermediate advance player. Let's see what happens next. He played knight c6, and generally what black is supposed to do here is expand like this, very quickly. Because white will very quickly overrun you. And if black tries to acknowledge you over here, you start playing h4, h5, you can get a very, very big and powerful attack very quickly. But he played f5, which as you see from the game review is, a, is an inaccuracy. And, and I, at my level, which he is not too far below my level, he's rated 2300 uh, in American uh, and 2200 FIDE. Like he's a, he's a, he's a strong national master. Um, you know, I, I didn't know that at the time, but I but I've, I don't really face this move. I don't face the move f5 because, again, it's very committal. It's a very committal move. And, you know, even moves like queen h5 uh, force him to have a lot of weaknesses and, and allow me to target a very major pawn in his position. So when he played this move, my, 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 my gut went down. You know, my gut was like, well, maybe he's like 1800, 1900, because it's a very committal decision. So, so I brought my queen back and... To my credit, had I justified my hypothesis by playing this move right away, maybe it would have been a different game. Point being, he's got a lot of weaknesses. And if he takes, this is a massive weakness. I mean, I don't even know how you defend that the rest of the game. Now, if you don't take and you play g6, I'm still going to take. If you do this, I have check. I mean, your king is butt naked, all right? And he's running around. Uh, and he's, you know... So, and then if you take like this, then I, I obviously, you know, I got all of this cooking in the future, and also this is weak, and this is a passed pawn. 
that's what I should have done. I didn't do that because I didn't really, I didn't think it, I didn't think I had to. I, I just like, I didn't realize how strong that move was. I thought I'm going to develop. And at this point, I, again, as I said, I thought, okay, easily 1800 because I've got this coming and I've got this and this. And as you see, the computer agrees with me. It does like my opening. And I thought the game's over. Like I just, you know, again, I got a good position, but I totally didn't capitalize because I, I completely missed this. A great move. Great move. I mean, I saw it, you know, on the board. I, I didn't see it in, in advance. And you saw from the video, he thought here for about 20, 30 seconds, and he found this move. Defending the squares. And if I take, he goes there. Very nice idea. I have a very nice counter here, which is actually not taking his knight. The best move here for white is to sack my knight too. And the point is he can't go here because this is a fork of the queen. Knight e6 would have been crazy. Crazy, and now I am threatening to take this, and I don't know what his best move here is. His best move might be to sack the knight with a check. I take, and then he takes with check, and I play like there. And now I'm still threatening this, and then I might have a winning advantage. I'm gonna be completely honest, I didn't consider that at all, and after this, like I said, I get the rook, but look at the evaluation. I'm hardly better, and I realized that during the game, and I went, whoops, again, I'm... Still thinking he might be around 1900, 2000. And I might just be thinking, well, I really overestimated my chances and I should have respected his position more, but I'm still going to win, <coughs> right? <coughs> I mean, if you play somebody and you think you're 400 points better than them, you think you're going to win because that's, it's logic. If you play somebody your strength, you think, well, it's 50-50, you know? Maybe some of you still think you're going to win. And at this point, I thought, well, I don't know what to do. So I'm going to develop and I'm going to castle. You don't know what to do in a position. You don't have a way you can improve. Just develop in castle if you haven't yet. Develop in castle. Okay, but I'm down a lot on time. And Derek, the anonymous 9,999 just won't go down. So I thought, all right, what does he want, right? In every chess position, you have to stop. You have to stop and ask yourself, what does my opponent want? My opponent wants this. That's what he wants. My opponent also probably wants to get the queen out of the way and push these pawns. What do I want? I think I want to poke at his position. I want to use my pawns to open up. Why? I have rooks. He only has one. So if we go to an endgame, we trade pawns, we trade queens, who's going to have the endgame advantage? The guy with the two rooks. Why? Rooks are bulldozers. They're going to get in and eat everybody. All right? But for now, I can't do that. So let's prepare. Let's just get our pieces. We know what Derek is going to do. There it is. Derek is advancing into our territory, right? Now I went here, which is a really stupid move. Really, really stupid move. And that move follows the philosophy in chess of like, if you don't know what, you do, what you're doing in a position, you spend a lot of time, you're going to make a mistake. And Derek just went here. And like an absolute clown, I went back to where I was. I mean, there is nothing more embarrassing in chess than having to undo a move because it was stupid. <laughs> Seriously. But I thought, again, the position is still equal. I'm being very negative about my position, but Derek can't do anything to me either because... He doesn't have the material. He doesn't have two rooks. I do. The reason white is not totally winning here is because black has a brick wall. That's really it. Black has a very fortified position. Everything is healthy and blocked. The way white is going to defeat that is by breaking it all down. Sometimes by trading and other times with sacrifices. So c4 and then now you see we're trading. Now what Derek does not want here is he does not want something like this because... Once the position starts opening up, it's going to get worse and worse for him. So what does he do? He does this. Now, what do I do here? I take like this, thinking I'm very clever, opening my C file. Computer hates it. The computer can, you know, go away. G5. And at all these moments, I was looking at rook takes up. I was looking like, can I sack my rook? Can I sack my bishop? Can I go here, here, sack my bishop? You know, again, when you have positions like this, your opponent's king is in the center. You got to think, can I sacrifice a piece for two pawns? Can I sacrifice a piece to give some checks? You know, if my opponent's king, let's just say, was on b8 or was on like a7, I would have no chance. Like, I'm not, I'm not getting to the king. It, even on a8, like, the king is totally safe. But the king is not there. It's on d7, so I'm thinking, I'm going to get a chance. And he goes here, and in this position, I, he blunders. He walked directly into this. And you know what I missed here? I missed... That after rook takes f5, it's not that this pawn is hanging, it's that I win his queen. But at this point, I, I, it didn't, I didn't even fathom 
that I could play rook takes f5. I didn't even think. You go back, Stockfish's like, idiot, rook f5. And I was, you know, because again, I saw rook f5, but I only saw this. I didn't see rook f5 in the context of pushing my pawn. And that's, a, that's a, it's something you gotta keep an eye on. So I closed the position and I got two big question marks. This is very, very bad, but at this point I have to play faster. You know, again, I got like 15 seconds I can't spend all this time thinking. Derek, meanwhile, is just advancing into my territory. At this point, it's setting in that, like, I might not win this game. <laughs> and I don't know who the hell I'm playing. Bishop e7, rook c3, and I thought that's not a good decision. Why would he trade rooks with me? You know? Again, he's leaving me with the dominant piece. But at the same time, I'm thinking, there is no dominant piece if he closes the position. If Derek is able to play, like, b4 and a3, I'm never moving another pawn for as long as I live. Literally. Which is what he did in the game. I mean, he went here, and I can't move any pawns. I have physically no moves, and now if we go to an endgame, this pawn might come knocking on the door at some point. So I'm like, oh my god, this is really, really bad. In every closed position, you're thinking about peace trades, you're thinking about pawn breaks, but I have no pawn breaks. So the only thing I'm thinking about is, can I sacrifice? And the answer is no. I definitely cannot sacrifice. If I sacrifice, nothing happens. I can't get in. There is nothing I can do. And again, if everything gets traded, let's just say very, you know, very hypothetically, I, I, this was like a terrible example, but, because I'm down a piece, but let's just say, even if everything gets traded, like we go to some end game, right? He has all of this. This is not a trade, but he's got pawns that are gonna come down. So now I'm in panic mode. Then I blunder, he has bishop g5. I think he didn't play this move because he thought maybe I can like attack him. I don't know, but I remember seeing his eyes light up when he played this, and uh, I went there, uh, he missed, you know, he just shuffled, and then king d8, queen g5, and I thought, no way, I, I can't make a draw, and he actually gave me one last chance. Remember that pawn I could have taken earlier with the rook? Well, now I could have played bishop takes, because the queen sees the knight. He blundered when he played uh, bishop c8, because he relinquished defense of this. Bishop f5, the same exact pawn, the same pawn fell twice! But I didn't see it. I didn't. I, ju I just went here, and he defended his king so well. He kept bothering me and bothering me and bothering me, and I was trying to go here and here, but I couldn't because I'd lose this damn pawn. I couldn't play bishop. Like for example, I wanted to go here, but I can't. If I go bishop g5, he's gonna trade queens and he's gonna take my bishop. I, there was nothing I could do, so I gave checks. I was like, no, I can't trade queens with Derek. But because I said I can't trade queens with Derek, I got my own queen trapped. And that's it. Uh, this is how I lost. I got my queen trapped because he totally sealed off my queen. I mean, that is so brutal. And I never got anywhere with these pieces. When the game was over, I said, Derek, are you like 22, 2300? And he said, yeah, I'm 2280. So his American rating is 2280. Online, he's 2600. Dude showed up, and I thought he was a 1000 rated beginner. <laughs> like, I, I had no clue. I just had no idea who I was up against. Slowly, I was like, is he 1800? Is he, is he 2,000? Like, what's going on? Is he 2,100, 2,200, 23? Like, it just kept going up and up. You know, I knew he was making some inaccuracies, but, and, and I gotta tell you, this is, this was an unnerving game. I managed to win the rest of them, but congrats to Derek, because this dude is a beast. But I want revenge, and I will be back to Florida, because as it turns out, Florida man is a negative meme, but I lost to a Florida man in this game. That's all I have for you today. I'm very embarrassed. Now get out of here.